Yes? Oh, Sally, has Mr. Hunter come back yet from the office? No, Mum. Oh, you do look lovely. My new costume, Sally, do you like it? Cost ever such a lot of money because it's real mink. Feel. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, Flupa. Here, let me take that for you. Oh, no, you take my coat. I just want to put this down here to see if I haven't forgotten anything. What kind of fur is this, then? I don't know, Sally. It was a present from Sir Charles and Mr. Lever. I've never seen an animal marked like that. Have you? Mm -hmm. I think it was from a, the prairie. Oh, that would be hyena or moose, I suppose. Oh, yes. Oh, dear, I wonder what Mr. Hunter's doing. I mustn't miss that plane. Oh, you've bagged the time yet, Mrs. Thursday. Really, you have. Yes, I know, but he promised to see me off, and I can't go to the airport all on my own. He'll be back in good time, I'm sure. Oh, dear. I hope I've got enough wool. Enough? Well, you can't buy wool on an aeroplane. Looks to me you've enough to last you more than one journey. Oh, well, I like to have my bit of knitting. I can't just sit there gaping. Oh, look what Cook gave me. Whatever are they? Earplugs. She said uh, those aeroplanes have got four big engines, make a terrible roaring noise. She don't know what she's talking about. Oh? Huh? Oh, well, it was very nice of her to think of it. Aren't you using your zipper bag for the things you want on the journey? Oh, no, I'd never get everything in, dear. But they won't let you have these big cases in the plane with you. Oh, yes, they will. I'm going to put my luggage where I can keep my eye on it. I mean, it's all new. I can't afford to lose it. They won't let you have them with you, Mrs. Thursday, honestly. Now, I'll just pop upstairs for that bag and put the things you want for the trip in it. Oh, dear, Sally. I do wish I was going there by ship. I know I've often said I'd like to go up in an aeroplane, but I didn't really mean it. If we do crash, we'd all die together. That's one comfort. Now, um, you go into the kitchen. Cook's out shopping, but I'll be right down to make you a nice pot of tea. Oh, no, I won't have any tea, thank you, Sally. Don't worry, Mum. They've got washrooms and everything on aeroplanes. Have they? Fancy. Oh, all right, well, I'll go and put the kettle on. You don't think he's forgot, do you, Sally? Of course not. Frankly, I'm astonished, Mr. Lever. Indeed. Half a dozen sites in some of the most attractive little towns in the country, all going for a song, and you turn the offer down. The Dombridge Group isn't in business to pick up bargains like a lot of old women at a jumble sale. Well, take this site in Haverton, for instance. 150 feet of road frontage just off the high street. Have you asked yourself why strakers want to get rid of those sites? Because strakers aren't developers. They're land agents of a very old-fashioned kind. And with the leases going up on these sites, they simply don't know what to do with them. Yeah, they're not the only ones that don't know what to do with them. Have you ever been to these towns, Hunter? I once spent rather a gaudy night in Biddleswick. Averton is one of the worst traffic problems in the country. Well, naturally, 20th century industries busting out onto a 14th century town. They haven't allowed any further development of the centre of Haverton for five years. Last. And they're not likely to till the motor car is abolished by law. Same with all the other places. You can't build on any of these sites. Do you really think we haven't checked? Hmm? Oh, yes, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Lever. Yeah, your secretary. Oh, thank you. <coughs> yes, Mavis. The time. Good Lord, you don't have to ring me in the managing director's office if I... Oh, yes, I see. No, no, I hadn't forgotten. But it does you credit to remind me. You're improving, Mavis. I've got to go. I've got to see Mrs. Thursday to London Airport. Oh, I wish her bon voyage and all that from us, won't you? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Um, do you think I might have another look at these? Hmm. We're not complete idiots, Hunter. Barker and I were running this group of companies very successfully before you or Mrs. Thursday came to this firm. With a little help from the late Mr. Dunrich, perhaps. I still think you're wrong. Given time, these sites will be worth a fortune. Uh, the matter is closed, Hunter. Well, I shall tell Mrs. Thursday... Mrs. Thursday right. attended the board meeting when Straker's offer was considered and rejected. Very well, but if our competitors snap up those sites... But if they're stupid enough to do that, they can hardly be considered very seriously as competitors. Really? We shall see. 
could have got this costume in grey. Only I chose pink because I thought I'd leave it behind when I left Canada. I'd leave it behind for Patsy if she likes it. And the hat too. Bet she's looking forward to seeing you again, isn't she? Oh, yeah. It's been a long time. Four years. Got one of them Canadian accents now, I wouldn't wonder. Oh, well, she would have, wouldn't she? Oh, dear, I expect everything's ever so different over there, you know. Oh, doubt if she's changed much, Mrs. Thursday. No, not Pat, no, not really. More tea, do you? No, thanks. Of course, when she went over there, when she got married, I never thought I'd ever see her again, you know. But it's such a long way off, you see, such a long way to go. This time tomorrow, eh? Oh, yes. You'll have a lovely time out there, madam. Yes. I don't know what I'm worrying about, really, except that it's so far off. Canada seems like the other end of the world to me. You see, until a few weeks ago, I'd never been further than Margate. Would this be him at last? Mr. Hunter wouldn't ring. He'd have his key. Is Mr. Hunter in? No, but he's expected. Oh, well, then I'll wait then, shall I? Wait. Who is it, Sarah? morning. He'll be rushing out again as soon as he comes in, miss. Who shall I say it is? Miss Grant. Rowena Grant. Ah, finished packing, Mrs. T. I'll be in a nice pickle if I hadn't, wouldn't I? <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. I had to speak to Joe Lever. Bates, as uh, soon as he's brought in the luggage... Uh, Excuse me. Who is she, Sally? Search me. Somebody call Rowena Grant. But Miss Grant, I didn't expect to see you. How do you manage to keep it up, Mr. Hunter? Uh, keep it up? A house this size in Belgravia. Why, even on what my father earns, we have to let our front rooms as offices. Uh, yes, well, uh, upkeep is a bit of a problem, I must admit. Uh, but still, you know what it is in these days. And, uh... Yes? Bates says it's time you were off. Ah, uh, just coming. Bates? Who is Bates? Uh, the chauffeur. Chauffeur? Well, how many servants do you keep, Mr. Hunter? Oh, well, he's not my... Look, uh, do you think you could come back later? I have to go to London Airport. Oh, well, I can wait. Uh, much better to come back later, Miss Grant. I should be uh, home in a couple of hours. Uh, sh shall we say... Uh, one o'clock. Uh, I'll uh, meet you here and then we could uh, go out and have a smart and lunch together. Well, now look, I really don't mind waiting, you know. Cook's not back yet, Sally. I don't like going without. I'll her. say goodbye to her for you. Yes, because I wouldn't like her to. She'll fly. understand. Oh, I'll take that, Bates. You just put the other cases in the car. Yes, very well, madam. Yes, well, I think that's everything, isn't it? Oh, and, and uh, Sally, uh, don't forget, when Miss Mercer brings back that dress she's altered for me, you will remember. You don't have to worry about a thing, Mum. No, I wouldn't like her to think she wasn't going to be paid till I got back. I think that's all, isn't it? Um, oh, no, the laundry. Look, put a fresh pair of socks out for Mr. Bill every day and a clean shirt every other day. Don't let him go about dirty, will you, dear? He'll be well looked oh. after. Goodbye, dear. Bye-bye, Mrs. Thursday. Have a lovely time. Oh, yes. Better step on it now, I think, Mrs. T. Look at him. I'm the one what's been waiting. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you're going to take care of yourself while I'm away, Mr. Hunter. Now, don't worry about me, Mrs. T. Dear, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. <laughs> Who was your lady friend who walked in just now? A lady friend? Yes, her that walked in with her nose in the air. Oh, no one special. Someone I met last night. Oh. Smart-looking girl. Very. Oh, there's nothing uh, personal in it, Mrs. T. Just business, I assure you. You keep an eye on Bill while I'm away, won't you, Mr. Hunter? I mean, don't go let him in, bring any of his boozing pals home, will you? I'm not his nursemaid, you know. Where did you say you met her? Where? 
Yes, where? Oh, at uh, some gambling club. She lost 5,000, never turned her hair. What, in one night, 5,000? Oh, her father's Sir Edwin Grant, the financier. Oh, I don't care who he is. Well, I hope he told her off when he heard about it. I expect he's used to it. How much did you lose? Me? Uh, well, I've uh, still got the shirt on my back. Well, I hope you're going to take things a bit easy, Mr. Hunter. I mean, men of your age. <laughs> I'm not in my dotage yet, you know. No, but don't go burning the candle at both ends. All right, Mrs. T. I remember. About ten minutes, probably less. Oh, big, isn't it? I wouldn't like the polishing of all that. <laughs> Wonder what they use. Electric polishers. Oh, yes, of course they would. Still, I reckon there's nothing like a good bit of elbow grease. No, I, I dare say. British Overseas Airways announced the departure of their flight. This is it. Oh, well, can't, not yet. To but she Rome said. To Johannesburg. To Johannesburg. You want to get on the wrong plane, do you? Come on, let's go and sit down here. Customs and passports humanity. Oh, I say, don't I look awful like a murderess? Oh, no. I ought to have gone to that, you know, that place you told me about. Instead of sitting in that cubby hole and taking a picture of myself by pressing a button. Do you know me? Not from Adam. I seem to know you. It's coming back. Damn it. I know your face. Never forget a face. There uh, must be some misunderstanding. No, no, no. Got it. Dickie. Dickie Hunter. As soon as I heard your voice. Hasn't changed a bit. Well, I'm afraid I don't remember. Oh, great snakes alive. Don't say you don't remember me. I know I've altered a bit, moustache and all that sort of rubbish, but I haven't changed all that much. Nicky. Nicky. Smythe Williams. Nicky! Dicky! Well, I'm blessed. Ah, oh, my dear old chap. <laughs> well, I shall never forgive myself. Should have known at once. No, no, no. Quite understandable. Quite understandable why it uh, must be at least 20 years. At least. Nicky Smythe Williams. Dicky Byron Hunter. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, this is an old uh, friend of mine. Uh, we were at school together. Uh, yes, Nicholas Smythe Williams, Mrs. Thurston. Yes, your son and I were the best of chums at school. Not my son. No damn good as scholars, you understand, but we passed the time, eh, Dickie? We <laughs> passed the time. Not my son. You know, I often wonder what had become of you. Heard you drifted off. They told me you'd cut away on your own. He was always the same, you know, but I couldn't get at the truth of it. He didn't like the rules. If he saw a rule coming, then he found a way around it, didn't you, Dickie? Not Bless my your son. Old heart. My word, you are looking in the pick. Have to hand it to you. Tell me, what are you doing now? Banking, city, politics? Well, uh, all three, as a matter of fact. Oh, yes, well, of course, I, uh, I always knew you'd get to the top, my dear fella. All that native cunning and all that. Uh, uh, Mr. Smythe Williams, passenger on flight 652 to Rome, please proceed at once through customs. Smythe Williams. Oh, that's me. Well, I, I, I'm a fast I'm a fly. Yes, well, it's been very nice seeing you, Dickie, old dear. And uh, 
I'm just going off to Rome for two or three days, you understand. Uh, the eternal city and all that sort of rubbish. Yes, well, don't steal my coins from the fountain, will you? Uh, no, 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 of course not. <laughs> yes, well, must best. Bye-bye, Mrs. Hunter. Bye-bye, Dickie. No, I'm not Mrs. Hunter. No? Oh, uh, I see. Yes, well, we must uh, meet again very soon, Dickie. Uh, ring my club, Bindles, Drinkies and all that. I'm sure you know where it is, don't you? you oh, I'll the... uh, see you at Asker, old boy. Yeah, yeah. In the royal enclosure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, I'm blessed. Nicky Smythe Williams. Old friend of yours? What? No, couldn't stand him. Nothing but a blasted bully. Notorious for it. Well, from the way you were shaking hands. Oh, it's just we were at school together. Yeah. A year older than me, that's all. I thought he looked at least 55. Well, I don't like him. Your instinct is sound. Probably harmless enough now, though. What school was you at, Mr. Hunter? Uh, was it one of them posh public schools you hear about? It had a fair reputation. Oh, I saw a film about one once. It was terrible. They got hold of this young boy and they held him over the fire. A lot of great louts. Still, I expect things have altered since them days. A lot in my day, they hadn't. Well, they didn't hold you over the fire, did they? Well, <laughs> not exactly. Still, I hated my school days. I really did. You know, you're a dark horse. That's what you are, Mr. Hunter. I mean, you went to that posh school. You've had your education. I mean, anyone can see that, and you know your way about. And yet... And yet? Well, nothing personal, and... It's that job you've done for Mr. Dunrich. I'm not running the job down, mind. But what I don't understand... Is, is how I came to be doing it. That's right. Uh, one day I'll tell you the story of my life, Mrs. T. Oh, well... Nice. No, I doubt it. Mind you, it hasn't lacked incident. There has been a certain quality of drama, as you might say. Up and down like Tower Bridge. <laughs> Up and down like Tower Bridge, as you so rightly observe. Oh, well, I hope you're happy working for me, Mr. Hunter. Tell me honest now, you do like the job you're doing. Don't have any worries on that score, Mrs. T. You're the answer to a hunter's prayer. You're not having me on? Cross my heart. Oh, but that's all right. And while we're at it, next time you see Mr. Smart Williams, you tell him I'm not your mother. That's one thing I'm not going to take the blame for. <laughs> British Overseas Airways announced the departure of their flight number... This is it. Five, three, yes, that's him. Montreal and well, thank you ever so no. much. Have you got your boarding card? That's what they want first. Oh, yes. Oh, well, well, goodbye, Mr. Hunter. Don't forget to yeah, okay. pay Miss... Mercer, because she don't make much as a dressmaker, will you? I'll see to everything now. Don't you worry you about a so thing. Much. Goodbye, Goodbye, Mrs. T, and have a wonderful time. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. I haven't got quite the hang of it, Miss. Sorry. First time, see. Will you be having lunch at home, sir? Uh, no, 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 thank you, Sally. Did she go off all right? Who? Uh, oh, yes, yes, Mrs. T. She, she, she should be well on her way by now. Right state of nerve she was in this morning. Still, it's only natural, considering. Ah, that'll be Miss Grant. Uh, let is, her in, will you, Sally? Who is this, Miss Just Grant? let her in, Sally. Yes, but don't go a penny above half a million. I'm not made of money, you know. No. I'd... Oh, forgive me, Miss Grant. Uh, right here, Sally, thank you. I'll ring when I want you. Sorry? That will be all, Sally. He thinks he's going to play the Lord and Master while Mrs. Thurst is away. He's got another thing coming. Cheap. Uh, Miss Grant, you told me uh, last night you were looking for a job. Uh, I uh, am, as I said, connected with a large number of business interests in the city, and I dare say uh, something could be arranged that... Uh... 
But suit? Well, what exactly had you in mind? Hamelin? What? Developments. I can't say I've ever heard of them. No, nor have I. I've asked Tonto to come along. It's possible that he may know something about them. He usually knows something about most things. Not that we're really interested, are we? Morning, gentlemen. Sorry to keep you waiting. Had Mrs. Thursday on the line from Canada. Well, did she have a good trip? Splendid. The air hostess came from Kennington. After that, there was no holding her, I gather. Ended up by helping out in the galley, I dare say. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past her. Apparently, the first uh, morning in Canada, her daughter brought her breakfast in bed. Mrs. Thursday had breakfast in bed? Yes, yeah, so the next morning she took everyone else breakfast in bed. Oh, it doesn't take her long to settle in. <laughs> well, you gave her our regards, I hope. Told her not to worry about the firm. Have a splendid holiday, I said. Ah, splendid. That's the spirit. We can look after things for her this end. Yes, I'm sure. Then if I had a feel she's got to rush back. No, of course not. She'll uh, be back on the 18th in three and a half weeks. Well, yes. Uh, well, from our point of view, we hope so. Hmm. Well, uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Lever? I just wondered if you had any inside information on a firm called Hamlin Developments. It seems they're negotiating with Strakers for those sites we were offered. You're not having second thoughts, are you? Not in the least. I did warn you, didn't I, that if that group didn't take up those sites, someone else would. Yes, but what do they want them for? Who are these people? A new property company. As a matter of fact, I'm uh, lunching with the secretary of their chairman tomorrow. You wouldn't care to come along, would you? The, uh, the Michaela restaurant at uh, one o'clock? The rest of your party are... Coming, I imagine. This way, madam. Thank you. Would madam care to order anything while she's waiting? Yes, thank you. I'll have a martini dry. Very dry. Certainly, madam. Mr. Hunter. Oh, uh, Charles. Ah, oh, there you are, Miss Grant. Uh, May I introduce Charles Barker, Mr. Lever, Managing Director of the Dunwich Group for Miss Grant. How do you know? Do sit down. Do you know? I have the feeling we've met before somewhere. Well, it's very likely, Sir Charles. Uh, uh, Miss Grant is the daughter of Fredwin Grant. Fredwin? Oh, well, of course, uh, perhaps it was... At uh, present employed as Secretary to the Chairman of Hamlin Developments Limited. Who uh, is? A waiter. I completed the formation of the company this morning with registered offices at Miss Grant's Chelsea flat. Are you saying that uh, I am the chairman of Hamlin Developments? A scotch for you, Mr. Lever. A large one. Uh, Sir Charles. What do you oh, would you like to drink, Sir Charles? To pink gin. Very noble. Pink gin for Sir Charles. I'll uh, pass. Now, look here, Hunter. Uh, Miss Grant, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to telephone my chauffeur. We should be finished here about three o'clock, I think, so if he could pick us up in the rolls about then. Mm. Belgravia 4279. Oh, I better write that down. It's only four figures, my dear. Belgravia, four, two, seven, nine. Four, two, seven, nine. At uh, three. At three. Shall I order for you? Yes, thank you. I'll leave it to you. Now, let's get this clear, Hunter. What are you doing setting up companies? Yes, your job's advising Mrs. Thursday, not negotiating for sites on your own. Oh, why not? You have other interests outside the group, don't you? Frankly, I'd like to make a little money myself before well, it's too late. This seems to be an excellent opportunity. Uh, you did turn the offer down, you know. My conscience is quite clear. Now, uh, what will you have? But why do you want these sites? Yes, why? What good are they to you? I can recommend the soul, Sir Charles. It's really excellent. Uh, so, yes, all right, the soul. Uh, no potatoes, mind. And you, mm. sir? Do the same. And now, potatoes? potatoes? No, of course not. I uh, have so the uh, chef's special, I think, with uh, lots of sauté potatoes uh, uh, for two. Ah, the lady. Very mm. good, sir, to start with. Oh, melon. Patty. Oysters, sir. For two, sir? Uh, for two. Look, what uh, I want to know is... Yes, sir. Thank you. Does Mrs. Thursday know what you're up to, Otter? Oh, I'm not harming Mrs. Thursday by this little bit of uh, private enterprise, and I'm certainly not harming the Dunwich Group, uh, number 32, please. Yes, but mm. just why did... Why do you want those sights? All right, Miss Grant? Uh, yes, your maid said she'd tell him. She seemed to find it rather amusing. Sadly. Really? Have to talk to that little girl. We can't have that sort of thing, can we? And uh, now, gentlemen, what I'm after at the moment is an outright purchase of the Haberton site 
with an option on the other sites to be taken up later. Habiton, they won't allow any development in Habiton for the next 20 years. Won't get permission to build a sandcastle. I wasn't thinking of building a sandcastle, but uh, what about a car park? Car park? Yes, multi-story. Half underground. Half above. Imagine. In a town that has a traffic problem, Mr. Lieber. Remember, thanks for the suggestion. Permission, they'll go down on their knees to me. You will hurry the first course, won't you? Yes, of course, Mr. Now, after Habiton, I shall take up the sites uh, in the other towns. Uh, the councils will jump at the chance of clearing the streets. The motorists will have to use the car parks. Ah, car park. At a price, of course. A reasonable price for an excellent public service. Ridding the streets of unwanted vehicles, like the Pied Piper of Hamlet. <laughs> Hamlet. Ah, yes, uh, Miss Grant's idea, that, the name. Rather apt, don't you think? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, go to any council these days, and what are they most played with? Not uh, rats, but cars. Lead them all away into the tall, dark mountain. Of course, if uh, you gentlemen uh, would like to go to Straker's with another offer, and now you know what can be uh, done with these sites, I suppose uh, I could withdraw. Yes, thank you. At a price, of course. I oh, don't doubt it. But have you any reason to suppose that Habiton Council will really allow you to... Oh, they don't know yet. Uh, I could hardly tell them of my intentions until I'd got the sites, but I've taken soundings. They're so desperate, they want to build a multi-story car park themselves. Unfortunately, the only site they possess is a mile from the centre of the town, whereas Straker's is just behind the high street where it's most needed. Look, this is all very... Oh, well. no, there's a mimsy. Hmm? No, it can't be. It is. It must be. Would you excuse me? Well, this is all very well, Hunter, but you'll need 30,000 pounds for that Habiton side, and heaven knows how much it'll cost you to put up that car park. Where can you lay your hands on money like that? Oh, I don't see any difficulty there. Huh? Do you? My like darling, it. isn't it lovely? Where'd you get it? It cost the earth. Well, no wonder I haven't seen you around. Who did it? Absolutely marvelous man. Oh, a new note. How fabulous. You mean? Well, uh, not exactly. You don't mean her father. Sir Edwin, you've got that old ruffian behind you. Ah, give me time, Sir Charles. I haven't got either of them yet. Uh, Pepper, Mr. Lever. But I uh, didn't uh, take Miss Grant on as my secretary simply because of her figure. Though uh, that is worth considering, don't you think? Uh, Ginger, Sir Charles? <coughs> Hunter won't need the car again tonight. You can have the rest of the evening off, he says. Very big of him. I wonder if that means our ladyship stay in the night. Yeah, I won't be surprised. Any minute now, I'd be giving orders to have the blue bedroom made up for her. And you'd jump to it, wouldn't you? Well, what about you, Bob? Running around all over the place? Oh, well, Mrs. Pursley did say he could have use of a car. Yes, but she didn't say he could carry on as if he owned it. And that's what he's doing, you know. And not just the car, neither. You shouldn't see him in there with her. Yeah, well, and who's stopping him? You, waiting on them both at table, cooking a dinner and serving it. Well, it was Cook's night off, and he specially asked that it was all in a good cause. Mm, been softening you up, has he? No. And you fell for it. Well, you know what he's like, dead cunning. He can chat you up so as you don't know whether you're coming or going. But I'm not taking any more of it, I can tell you. Whatever his game is, I'm not running any more errands for him, and that's fine. <laughs> He's ringing for you. From the drawing room. Better not keep the master waiting, Sally. Mmm, <sighs> you've got some lovely things here. Dreamy. How long have you lived here? Oh, for some years. One way or another. You must be doing fabulously. I wouldn't say that. Of course, once uh, Hamlin developments are launched... Uh, you rang, sir? Uh, yes, we'll have the coffee in here, please, Sally. Very good, my lord. What did she call you? Uh, uh, slip of the tongue. Uh, she's uh, used to waiting on the aristocracy, you see. You know, you could do worse than invest in Hamlin developments yourself, Rowena. No, it's an absolute gold mine. All those cars driving up those ramps every day with nowhere else for the poor things to go. <laughs> well, why not think about it then? There's nothing like driving in on the ground floor. Yes, well, I only wish I had something to invest. My dear Miss Grant. Rowena. Hmm. 
No, a girl who can lose uh, 5,000 pounds in a roulette is hardly likely to be stuck for money. Yes, well, that was my last bean, darling. My final fling. What did you say? Shall I pour it out? Uh, no, 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 leave it. Oh, I do adore this room. Mind you, it needs one or two things doing to it. But a really good designer could do wonders. D did you say that that, that 5,000 you lost? Did my you last penny. I'm broke. You can't be serious. I am, darling. Which reminds me, my salary. My salary as your secretary. We ought to discuss that, oughtn't we? Yes. I thought perhaps uh, 1,500 a year plus expenses. Cheap at half the price. Yes. Good. Then that's settled then. Daddy will be pleased that I'm actually earning money. Matter of fact, I was thinking, why don't you ask him to invest in the business? You think he might? Well, it's just the sort of thing he'd go for. Oh, why don't you talk to him about it, then? Talk to him? After what happened the other night? Other night? Honestly, you think it was my fault I lost that 5,000? Do you know what he did? No. He cut off my allowance and stopped paying the rent on my flat and told me to go out and get a job. So I did. Well, I had to, hadn't I? Job? And a very nice one, too. Richard. So you needn't be bothered about me anymore, because it's turned out very well in the end, hasn't it? Uh, yes, what is it? If there's nothing else, I'm off to bed. Oh, all right, Sally. Will Miss Grant be staying? You did tell Mr. Bates that he could go off duty. Uh, Miss Grant will be going home by bus. Bus? Uh, well, uh, taxi. Oh, what a shame. I do adore riding in your car. It gives me a wonderful feeling of... It's Mrs. Thursday's car. Who's? Oh, nothing, as I told Mrs. you to. Mrs. Thursday? Isn't that the woman who... Now, wait a minute. It's all coming back. This address, what's going on? Rowena. I better confess. Yes, I think you better. If all this belongs to Mrs. Thursday, then who and what are you? I'm uh, her business advisor. Business advisor? Well, then you only handle other people's money. Well, I'm not exactly impoverished, you know. I uh, do have a trust when I marry. Oh, how much? How much? Five thousand. Five thousand? I can lose that much in a night. Rowena. Rowena. Rowena, let me explain. Damn. Shall I lock up, sir, or will you? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Hunter. What went wrong? Well, let's uh, just say that I'm looking for finance elsewhere. Well, Mrs. Thursday returns next week, doesn't she? Mrs. Thursday? I no doubt you'll be able to touch her. After all, it's an investment. And it's your job to advise, Mrs. Thursday? Well, but I, I'm, I'm advising you. Why shouldn't the group interest itself in an investment of this kind? Oh, nothing doing, old man. Sorry. Excuse me. Weaver. Now, just a minute. Sir Edwin Grant's here. Grant? Rowena's father. Morning. I dear Edwin, this is an unexpected pleasure. Shut up, Charlie. Are you, Hunter? I, I suppose you must be. Well, you listen to me. Rowena's told me everything. What's it all about? Playing on my daughter's affections to try and wrangle money out of her? Making out she was some damn tycoon? Well, suppose we go along to my office. I've no it. time to run about corridors. Dead man. If you wanted money for this tomfool company of yours, why didn't you get on to me direct? Uh, direct? How much do you want for these sites you're after? 30,000. You better have 60 to kick off with. Can't raise a development company on peanuts? Get on to my accountants. They've ordered us to fix it all up for you. Uh, you, you. You mean that... that, that with uh, 60,000 in the kitty from me, you won't have any difficulty in raising all the rest. And while you're about it, get yourself a proper office. Think you could stick up a plate on your fiance's flat and call yourself a company? Time you were properly set up, Hunter. If you're going to be my son-in-law. Good day. What did he say? 60,000 pounds capital. No, I didn't mean that. Son-in-law. <laughs> Congratulations. Darling. Well, it's not exactly official yet. Oh, Rowena, I'm so thrilled for you. You will let me know the date at once, won't you? One does get so booked up in the summer. Reception on the yacht. Yacht? Your father? 
Scotland's yacht. Bring it up the Thames and you can both sail away in it together. And we can all throw confetti at you over Westminster Bridge. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Richard! Rowena. <laughs> Darling. Now, Rowena, I've got to talk to you. It's most important. Oh. Richard, this is Mimsy. Mimsy Richard. Rowena's been telling me your wonderful news. I don't doubt it. Oh, well, uh, obviously you've got lots to talk about. I must fly. Oh, well, I'll, I'll give you a ring, darling. Uh, give my love to you-know-who. <laughs> I will. Bye. Bye. So, we're, uh, we're engaged, are we? How many others have you told? Oh, I haven't said anything officially. I mean, not even the paper says official. Paper? What paper? Just a little something in the gossip column. Good heavens, now, oh, listen, Rowena. Oh, I'm Marina. so glad Dan has decided to finance you. I mean, he makes everything so simple, doesn't he? Simple? Now, Richard, come and sit down and let me explain. I am going to make you a wonderful wife. And you're going to make me a marvellous husband. I mean, it's the only thing to do. And what possible objection could you have? No. No. Richard! Richard! Perhaps I'd better wait. Nonsense. To... Stay where you are. Oh, Mr. Leader. Ah, oh, there you are, Hunter. Where have you been? Ah. I've been on to Straters. They're going to sign the contract with you Wednesday. All right? Of course okay. it is. I've also been in touch with Haverton Council. And my old friend, Councillor Rokeby, has kindly come with me. Rokeby. This is the young man I was talking to you about. How do you Chairman of Haverton Developments. Uh, Hunter's the name. Delighted, Mr. Hunter. I've heard so much. Yes, you'll hear more. Hunter will soon sort out your traffic problems. You just see that he gets everything he needs. There may be opposition. Well, spush it, man. This is going to be a good thing for the town, for Hunter, and for you. Well, of course, I'll cooperate in any way I can. Now, I'll leave you to thrash out the whole scheme with Hunter. Now, uh, Richard. You don't mind if I call you Richard? Uh, no. Can't go about calling my blasted son-in-law by his surname. Better get used to it. Now, Richard. Let's sort out this damn wedding. Can't be in the next three weeks. I'm booked solid. I'm afraid that's off. What are you talking about? Uh, the wedding. It's off. What? It was uh, never on, really. Oh, no, you don't, my lad. You can't wriggle out of it. I'll sue you for breach of promise, libel, slander, defamation, and anything else I can think of. But you've got no grounds. My lawyers will find grounds, or I'll fire the whole pack of them. I can't have my plans thwarted like this. What do you think of it, Rokeby? Uh, well, sir... Of course, uh, certainly. The man's an out-and-out -out scoundrel. Leading my poor Rowena up the garden. Well, to start with, my investment's cancelled. You can go elsewhere for your capital. But, but if you're interested in Hamlin developments... I'm not interested in this damn fly-by-night investment company of yours. That capital was a diary. A bribe? Call it what you like. I'd pay anyone 60,000 pounds to take my daughter off my hands. Can't expect anyone to take her on for nothing. That really would be stretching it. That 60,000 was compensation. Look, I'll make it 100,000. Oh, no, not for a million. Uh, nothing against Rowena, you understand, just against the notion of matrimony. Damn you, Hunter. I'll break you for this. Now, look here, be reasonable. Reasonable? I've offered 100,000 pounds. Why are you so anxious to get rid of your daughter? Why? Because she's spoilt, extravagant, lazy, obstinate. Because she's no head for figures, because she... Yes, you get the point, don't you? You wouldn't marry her, would you? I'm a father, you idiot. It would be illegal. Oh, all right. Rugby. Uh, yes, sir? I don't suppose you... Uh, uh, oh, well... Oh, no, you couldn't cope. Damn it. This brings me back to square one. I could kill you, Hunter. Hey-ho. There goes my hopes of a fortune. But uh, you'll get some capital from somewhere else, surely. Hmm. Who'd cough up what I want? Besides, I've uh, no stomach for it now, somehow. Yeah, I just saw Grant steaming down the corridor. What's up, Hunter? It's off. All off. This is 
very serious blow. My council is most anxious to develop the site as a car park. You see, oh, um, I'm Rokeby, Councillor Rokeby. How do you do? How do you do? So you can't raise the capital, Hunter? No, it, it's most unfortunate. Oh, no hmm. cause for alarm, Councillor. We may be able to think of something, eh, Charles? I would be surprised. <laughs> now, this company will have no difficulty in acquiring that side from Straker's. And uh, that it is not possible for Mr. Hunter to proceed? What, um, uh, you, you mean How about uh, some lunch, Mr. Rokeby? And what about a cigar? Oh, splendid. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Of course, we do everything we could uh, to make it a success for you. Uh, Ban all parking on the streets. There's yellow lines all round the town. Of course. <laughs> would you get Straker on the phone, Charles? See if he can join us for lunch. We might go to that restaurant that uh, Hunter took us to. It wasn't half bad. Oh, yes, Michaela's. I can recommend the soap. It's really excellent. I bet you were overweight this time. Oh, yes, I was. But you wait till you see with the presents I brought home. You'll say it was money well spent. <laughs> You'll have to watch it. You'll be going broke. Oh, I'll say. <laughs> How was your daughter? Pat, oh, she's fine. Not changed a bit. And she still kept her English accent. Speaks just as good as you and me do. Oh, and they're so happy together, Mr. Hunter. I wish you could see them. You'd change your ideas about getting married. You really would. Mrs. Thursday with him when he does come, Miss Grant. Yes, well, I won't keep him a moment, I promise you. Oh, here they are now. Really, just a moment. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, and tell Bates to come back, will you? Because I brought him some nice fur gloves back as a present. Mrs. Thursday, oh. how lovely to see you. How are you? We haven't half missed you, I can oh, tell you. Well, it's nice to be home, Sally. How are you? Although I've had a lovely time. Oh, it was a real tonic. You should see the things I brought back. I've got a real trapper's outfit for Mr. Hunter, and I've got a fur hat for Sir Charles, and a great tin of maple syrup for Mr. Lever because of his delicate stomach. You haven't done a stitch, Mrs. Thursday, not a stitch. No one ever had time, dear. And that's for you. Oh, you shouldn't have, really. Oh, it's only a little pair of earrings I thought would look nice on oh, you. Oh, then not. It's a maple leaf design, see, done in rubies. And I've got a maple leaf brooch for Cook, uh, because maple leaves, they're national... What you cook? What's that? Who's that? We're... we're just good friends. But she lost you, I heard her. Just a soldier's farewell. Oh, what say? You've been getting into mischief while I've been away, Mr. Hunter. No, Mrs. T, I... I assure you, it's all been very dull and uneventful. Honest? Of course, it's no business of mine. Uh, but I do hope you took it easy. I mean, you needed a good rest. Oh, look. Now, this is for you. Bend down, and we'll see how it suits you. Oh, I say! 